Hello, and welcome to this week's Generation 9 podcast. Your host, me, Victor Martinez, along with Edwin Mejia and Vlad Yurin. Where you at? Where you at, there, son? <laughs> Missing <laughs> in action once again. Oh, God. So, so when he gets back, he's really going to have a lot to say. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> a lot. We're, we're here in front of the week, Vic, here at HQ. Um, obviously, we've had a lot to cover the last week or so. Um, and, of course, more questions for Vic. Uh, and I'm first and foremost, we want to give thanks to Dial Moods. This is, a great, this is a great flavor. This is my favorite so far. Yeah, Mango, uh, passion fruit. I enjoyed. I I've enjoyed the, the the drinks as well. You don't get that like aftertaste, that nasty artificial uh, drink aftertaste, which I really appreciate the, the most. Part. Uh, the crashes, no crashes. Um, they're in a great company, company that we've been really supporting here, and obviously they're supporting us here at the podcast. Yep. Uh, turn the dial up, turn your mood up, dial moods, elevate your performance. They're the way to go. Try them out. All right. What's the question of the day? So what's this week's what's question that? of the day, uh, Vic, no critiques this week. No critiques, that's good. No critics, man. man. You know what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but we have another question, and one, this amazing question that comes to us from Choice Suntest4425. Sure, I've heard that name before. He submitted a few good questions cool. in the past. Cool, Shout cool. Loyal you. watcher, loyal watcher. Shout out to you. So he goes, yo, Edwin, can you ask Victor if he was ever close to or worried about becoming pre-diabetic or by diabetic from eating every two hours while lifting weights and competing? Good question. Not including taking uh, IGF-1 and insulin. The body produces insulin every time you eat. No matter what you eat, protein, carbs, sugar, junk food. Good question. Um, pre- very, very personal. <laughs> very personal. No, I mean, was I close? I one cannot say yes or no because I never really tested. But they have the shakes and the blurry visions and all the side effects that you will get from high sugar contents. Yes. And again, that's just from binging after all the shows. Um, then again, I never really abused insulin. I was never a big, you know, sugar eater, unless uh, obviously, like I just mentioned after the show, but, um, year round, I was never one of those guys who just want to, you know, go gluttony on sugars or anything like that. IGF one, um, couldn't afford much of it. So therefore didn't use much of it. I remember you on the, on the show, you, you said I had a crazy experience where you almost- like, Yeah. Oh, I, close call. Yes. Close call. It I was that. one, I think I used IGF twice in my entire bodybuilding career. And uh, one of them those was the fragment, which is, you know, you know, a good one is hard to find now. And that was so long ago. Can you remember the brand or anything? Then there was, um the second time where i just bought a bunch i got such a good deal it was just like <laughs> i take it all and big yeah, sale yeah no it was <laughs> i think one of those one-time deals ever so I, I was always one to collect exotic supplements from all over so when somebody will show me one i say give them all to me and i would just <laughs> buy them <laughs> So I was kind of a hoarder, but at the same time, anybody who knew me and competed with me, I would share and I would put them on to the good stuff. Mm. But um, at that time, it was only a handful of IGF. I think it was uh, four milligram Incrolex. I think it was like 10 bottles. Nobody gets 10 bottles anymore. (laughs) And uh, I took them all and I started using it because I had, well, I was in immigration for eight months, so I lost a lot of weight. Hmm, and yeah. it was one of those things that it came around the right time. And uh, I used it cautiously. I never went crazy on it. It was just twice a day, um, two different workouts a day. And again, usually administered in the muscle I was training that day. Mm-hmm. And uh, I never went crazy, but two weeks out, I had one bottle left. I'm like, oh, what's this gonna do? It's just, you know, taking one full bottle and I did it, it big mistake. Could it have been worse than what it was? Cause I did wake up. I knew the incident was affecting me. 
You went to the fridge, right? You started eating? Yeah, but I couldn't make it because you almost half asleep, half awake. I almost bit my tongue off. Because you're trying to chew on it. Yeah, I was literally chewing my tongue. So That's one of the craziest stories, man. I got this uh, half gallon orange juice from Whole Foods. I make the great orange juice. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and I just downed it in one stroke. And it was just like, you're almost seeing yourself and it just comes in and your body just goes, whoa, and you go back into your body. And by the time I started seeing anything, what goes on, I'm like, I'm seeing so much blood all over the house. The tongue was bleeding, actually. I almost chewed it off. It, it was insane. Wow, and, uh, um, I remember I had no taste buds for a month. Do you think if a bodybuilder is using insulin, he can develop uh, diabetes? They can, and, and it has to do a lot with the pancreas. You, you know, how mm -hmm. much pressure are you going to put on that pancreas <clears throat> to react, you know? And how much insulin are you using? I know so many people, uh, when I did use it at the time, it was probably five, eight, you know, not more than that. I know people were doing 20 you know, units, 30 units, 50, and and they use insulin as a means to increase their appetite. Right. They and think eat bad I food, eat right? More. Eat bad well, food. Well, they, 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 they almost think this, you know, because people always say just eat more, more size. Mm -hmm. But it's, you're going to eat more, more size, but it ain't going to be muscle, it's going to be fat because you're eating so much calories that your body's not really going to put to use. You forget that part, you know. So I always believe then eating as your body asks, you know. Eventually, if you keep training hard enough, the hunger will come naturally. And uh, I never like force feeding. So when you, people do insulin, they get this insulin hunger. They think it's cute because they're eating so much. Meanwhile, why don't you eat that much without the insulin? And see how much better quality results you're going to get. All right, Chewy. Well, uh, what is he? He got a price from Dial Moods. Uh, Chewy, Thanks, Chewy. Keep Sun watching. Test four four two five. All right. All right, so let's talk about something interesting. Uh, Jake Paul is Jake Paul on steroids. Uh, have you seen his Have you seen his latest fight against Mike Perry, which was about three, three, four weeks ago at this point? Uh, have you seen that fight? It was horrible. <laughs> uh, uh, it was so you, horrible. I'm guessing you saw. It. <laughs> Listen, I, I saw it because Jake Paul. He's such you know he does such crazy promotions and uh, All right. It's just in your face. It's like, even if you don't want to see it, it just pops up in front of you and you're like, all right, let me just check this out. And uh, uh, Mike, so he, Perry, Mike Perry just wanted a paycheck, man. I, I don't even know. Was that even boxing? You it was know? strange. It was strange. No, no, no. It, it was <laughs> Mike Perry. Listen, I, I think you're a much better trash talker than you are a boxer. He was a tough fighter. He took a lot of punishment, I thought, before <sighs> You know. Thank you, sir. Let me have another and let a check come <laughs> along with that too, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. But Thank after you, the sir. fight, after the fight, Paul Conor, McGregor, them. Conor McGregor, who's now the owner of uh, Bare Knuckle FC, yes. he made a comment and he said uh, he went on a rant basically on, I think on Twitter or X, whatever. McConnor and rant. <laughs> he said he was juiced out of his head and he called him a fat can of bitch piss. Uh, Listen, I don't know what that means by that, but... McConaughey, uh, you know, maybe we to put a nice chunk of change in your pocket, you know, for a spectacle of a fight, you know. You're owner of Bare Knuckle, you're making good money. Trying to call Jake Paul so you can do another fallacious fight, so you can have another check. I don't know, but juice and coke, which is better? <laughs> good question. <laughs> but uh, do you think Jake Paul, look, looking, at, looking at Jake Paul... <laughs> Look at that. That's a good question. Look at looking at Jake Paul's appearance in that fight. Do do you think he's on juice? I mean, I allegedly. can't say. Listen, I, he could be allegedly on juice, but if he's not on juice, he's definitely on GH. You see that jaw? <laughs> I heard that. Zoom into that jaw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, to jaw, me, he man. looks like he's on juice. It look, it's it's evident he's on know. something. At the um, end of the day, he is training. He is young. 
what is he, six foot three? I think so, pretty tall. You know, pretty tall. I mean, when you're an athlete these days, you know, regardless, no juice, good supplements, good coach, great food, you're going to look like you want juice, man. I mean, it's one of those things. And, uh, you know, could he be taking peptides? Maybe that, you know. But I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, he's on juice just because, you but know, you're hating people. on him, you yeah, know. It's right. one of these things. That's the only defense people have, you know. You have a little muscle, you know, they feel, you know, like you're dominating over them. You're, you're alpha male. The first thing I'm going to say is, you're on juice. I'm like, do you feel better about yourself? I'm already bringing it up because he was called out by Conor McGregor. But by the way, Conor McGregor was also accused of, of taking juice. I've heard that before, right? <laughs> Connor, it's, it's ironic. Bro. Listen, Conor, bro, I, I don't know, man. I like Conor, though, man. He's, he's, no, he's a great, he's he's a great, a great fighter. Great fighter, Irishman, yeah. you know, and uh, his story is just great, man. Sure, man. He's, got, he's got a great story, man. But uh, 100%. I don't know. I just don't want him to do that, that thing that, uh, what's the name of that other flamboyant fighter is doing, the boxer? Which one? Ryan Garcia? Right, dude. Oh, man. Gregor, you, come you, on, you, man. you dedicated the whole uh, one of our previous yeah, episodes yeah. to Ryan Garcia. You need to go that route. You know, McGregor, you're good, man. You know, you're a champion. You're a freaking legend. And, uh, you know, but uh, I don't know. Maybe he's doing it for a reason. You know, money to promote his bare knuckle. Sure. We'll wait always... for that Tyson fight. We'll see if that actually ends up happening. They, they said in the, in, the, in the Mike Perry fight, they said it's happening in November now. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's. I have that's my doubts about that. TBD. We'll see if that happens. I mean. Yeah, I don't know. Mike is doing good right now, man. You don't need that fight. Can we, quick question. <laughs> you, you mentioned uh, peptides. What peptide would you actually would you, would you think he would be taking to grow? I mean, nah, injuries that, are not bad, you know. Peptides, I know, but there's ones that help you recover. But which? One? Yeah, no, there's just a lot of them that mock, you know, certain you know things like the IGF one, and there's. You know, the TB500 for joints, you can lift more, you know, recovery. Interesting. Uh, fat but burning. That pays a know, ban by the, by the athletic commission, right? Um, are they? It's some of them are. It's gray, gray, gray area. area you right. know, there's no detection, no real detection for them. So I don't know. And again, me, it's, you know, before juice, there's so many other options that you can go just to buy yourself a little more time in this world you know without mm -hmm. abusing anything so again it, it, if you're young you have no injuries you, you you're training in a skilled sport like boxing i mean you could use some stuff you know to recover but at the end of the day you know you don't want to get caught in doping you know get a year suspension and uh you know lose credibility true true uh, let's change subject real quick. So Michael Krizo, you familiar with Michael yes. Krizo from, uh, yes. from from, from uh, yes, Slovakia? So yeah. he is out of the Olympia with an injury. So two years ago, he was like a big prospect, right? Everybody was talking about him. His name was huge. Even like last year, yes, he moved divisions from uh, I IBB or whatever, you know, the, the worldwide IBB. And he switched gears and joined the uh, American IB IBB mm -hmm. Pro. And people said he's the next huge thing, right? People said he's gonna actually gonna win the Olympia like his first year. And then um, I'm not sure he's been injuries and he didn't place, I guess, as high as he wanted. So what do you think about Michael? Yeah, do you think his... that do you think the hype is gone? Yeah, do you think the hype is gone? I, I think there was probably all the pressure. That's why it's good to move himself, you know, being an underdog. Mm -hmm. But when you know the cameras turns on him, social media turn on him. You gotta remember, he was competing with you know i'm not gonna say low budget you know i was gonna say with uh, low caliber competitors in europe in yeah. europe you know so right. it's low caliber meaning they weren't up to par or even close to him so he was able to dominate that you know it's simple easily he was killing him. easily you know so his worst shape was a great shape on that side but obviously he realized like here i am i'm winning these shows and uh, I think there, there's a few guys that I can actually name that were on that side that had a crossover to the IFBB Pro League slash NPC because we're just next level. We're just different level. You know, we take it up, you know, a notch, a few notches up. And uh, so when guys are on that side, it's high and mighty, but then they realize they're competing with mediocre competitors and also getting mediocre paychecks and nobody knows who they are because 
they get no coverage at the same time. Speaking of IBB, the European one, and it's, it's not European, they're all over the world. Yes. And we heard, Ed and I heard stories when we were in Brazil. There's some aggressive stuff happening behind the scenes. Like, sure, I guess they, 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 they politics like... Politics like anything else, it's dirty. Like legitimate, like they're going to war against the IBB Pro, like in different countries outside of US, and it gets very aggressive. Remember, remember Tamar was telling us the story? It's crazy, man. Yeah. Whatever they're doing, they're always first. Athletes always last. Right. So. <laughs> right, 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 right. Shit about them, you yeah, know? Look, I mean, uh, that's why I mean, we're here, right? Answer those questions. And I appreciate having Vic, you know, you on to discuss that. And it brings us to another question. I mean, people always ask us, and this is something I always kind of like battle with, because we're always on the road and we're always traveling. And we're, we're like always working. I always train one body part per day. I may be per because, week. I mean, per week. Per I mean, week. Per day and per week, whatever. But for me, I mean, for you, Vic, do you recommend one body part per week? And how many body parts per day? I mean, obviously, off season, I know a lot of people do one one body I mean, part per day. What you do you competing? recommend? <laughs> it's like you're not competing, you know. Right. So you you think no it's okay? Point. There's you, no point. That's okay to just have one body part to work out one body part per week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Train each body part once per week. You know. That's not a lot, though. It's not a lot, but it's enough. If you want to just stay in shape, you're a businessman, you're, you're, you have another, you know, career. Right, right. You're not going to step on stage, you know? It's one of these things, it's, you're going to be training each body part twice a week. Okay, oh. so for a regular person one week, but for a competitor or some amateur competitor or somebody looking to get into the stage, you would say two, twice a week? Twice a week if it's your lacking body part. Yes, of course, by all means, you know, you're in the game, like, this is what you need to do. But now you're just trying to maintain yourself healthy. You're training in a hotel gym. You know, I have clients and I say, you know, when you get to a hotel gym, just record it. And by the time you get set on the, in your room, you'll have your workout. You know, it's one of these things like, I'm not going to have you do, you know, Leg press, leg extension, hack squat. Meanwhile, in the hotel, they have his leg extension. So I have you, you know, if that. So it's. I mean, you're lucky at all. You no, know, just leg extension. enough, you know. And <laughs> usually, when you travel and you land, let's say you go to Europe, the best thing to do is just uh, before you do anything, just get to the gym, do a little overall. Some of these hotels have terrible gyms. We travel so Horrible. much, and it's like just literally just one cardio machine. And maybe like a dumbbell rack. That's Most it. of them have horrendous Terrible. gyms, or if that's what they call them. I mean, fitness studios, whatever it is, they're trash. Mm -hmm. Most of them are trash, you know. And I think uh, <laughs> yeah. I think Marriott is to blame for that. But uh, Marriott, uh, Wingate, I mean, Wyndham hotels, hotels but, um, yeah. I think right. they could turn it around now because it's uh, you know before the hotel used to have an agreement with the local gym. Now each hotel has their own gym, but you Where's guys that, need to yeah. step it up. You have the room. Right. You know, you want a better stay. So a little upgrade wouldn't hurt because all they need to do is just take two rooms and make it into a gym. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it's they're getting better. Some hotels are getting better. I think when you go to the Arnold, you stay at the Hilton. The, it's yeah, not bad. That one. Yeah, I know what you're talking. about. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, not yeah, bad. Yeah. So they are getting better. And uh, and again, they have to go with the change of times. It's like you go back 15, 20 years, nobody was really rushing to the gym. You know, people just wanted to stay in a hotel. Vic, have you ever tried those machines called Tonal? It's like a thing, a screen on a wall, and there's like extension cables coming off of it. It's called Tonal, right? Yeah, it's a new, it's new yeah. it, I mean, it came out during uh, the pandemic, but yeah, basically yeah. they're it's like- It's a Peloton for workout. They're, they're it's a new tech firm that obviously put them out where, you know, LeBron James was also an ambassador, yeah, but yeah, basically no. it's, LeBron, it's connected to- LeBron, I know you don't use that, man. <laughs> have you ever tried one of those things? Uh, I mean, it's, it's like the modern day solo flex. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You it know, disappeared. <laughs> this will disappear too. Because <laughs> it's just a modern day solo flex, you know? It's cool though. It does the work for certain people, but you're an advanced athlete. I mean, you're going to tear that thing off the wall, man. Yeah, I know, right? You would think <laughs> you're gonna tear it off. Maybe the that's wall. a good thing for hotels to have. Or just it's, it's good for hotels, but then you have to now try to Share use it, it for yeah. the techie people yeah, that are not yeah. so tech savvy. They got to deal with this whole, 
and the whole touching it's just i don't know a lot yeah. of people are not gonna find it so appealing right and simple so to use right. people like simplicity true. true you know let's talk about a couple more things actually so terrico gandhi and uh, chris cormier they have a podcast together right and they were talking about this year's olympia and they said right at they believe that uh wesley vissers yes can overpower chris bumstead at this year's olympia Wesley, of course, won the Wesley, Classic. Yeah, yeah the Wesley won the Old Classic. I know Ron, he beat Dino, right? Dino came exactly. in second. Exactly, he beat Dino, yes, yes. But Dino came in third, actually, or I'm not too sure. But the point is, he came in number one. Yeah. He's obviously now one of the favorites. Obviously, the favorite we know is Chris Bumstead, but they're claiming that there's a potential that he could actually dethrone Chris Bumstead at the Arnold. I mean, at the Olympia, sorry. I Do mean, you see that possibility of that happening? Anything's possible. And True. Then plus the injuries that Chris Bumstead had, you know. Um, let's see. Let's see if he still has, you know. Okay, let me rephrase the question. If you go to Vegas this year for Olympia, would you bet on Wesley Vissers to get Wesley first looked good. I, I was at the Arnold. He looked no good. doubt about it. He looked good. And the thing is, he's only going to look better. Right. Right. You know, so it's one of those things, you know. He's uh, he's the Dutch oak, man. He's This guy's... Uh, Came out good. I mean, I got to the Arnold and I saw Dino and I'm like, damn, Dino looks huge, but then it's classic. So right. that's one of the things where it kind of, you know, did him, you know, a negative effect to the judges because they saw him, but then, you know, Wesley was just, he was just taller. You know, had he's very classic. Tall. He's, a, he's over six foot two, I think. Yeah, right? he had classic so. lines. He didn't look so thick like Dino. <clears throat> and again, he shifted the classic look to Wesley. So that's the only thing. But Dino w- w- was huge. I mean, I like Dino's look more. But you think Wesley, there's a possibility Dino didn't take the show too serious? Maybe that's um, possibly was the case. No, of- no. I, I think he, I think Dino came in with the mentality of you know overconfident. Could be, that's what I'm saying, yeah. You know, yeah, but, yeah. but Wesley just brought that classic look. He was, when you think classic and you're a judge and you're judging classic, he just had more classic look. That's right. the only thing I can gather. Did Dino look horrible? Not at all. Wesley just came with that old school, you know, freaking late 70s, early 80s, you Can know, wish. look on, on that stage. And he was just so dominant that, uh, you know, going back to uh, Chris Bumstead now, now, what's Chris going to, do different, you know, can he That's do more? That's a good question, what is he gonna do different? Yeah, can he do more? Did he recover from his injuries? You know, I mean. I think he did. I think it was a the micro tear, right? In yeah, process. micro tear, I mean, he's been busy, so I don't know, I mean, so. He's a new father too. Yeah, new father, I mean, that's just gonna hype him up no, more though, you know, because I remember my daughter was born before the 07 Olympia, that's just hyped me up more, oh, so. Wow. It gave you motivation? Yeah, yeah, it motivates a different kind of fuel to that fire, you know? So, I mean, all I know is it's gonna be a great class. Um, it's the fastest growing class um, after, what, wellness, you know, in female, mm-hmm. uh, classic bodybuilding. And it's just, uh, you can't count Bumstead out yet. Yeah, yet, I, but we Wesley, know. Wesley is definitely gonna, you know. It's coming from the yeah, he's definitely coming for it. And like I said, he just won the Arnold. And usually, usually when momentum. you do the Arnold, that momentum is, is good. I don't think they're going to let him. I don't think both Bumstead or Dino, they're going to just let him have it. Like, I think they're going to come right off overly the prepared this year. Because they know that he has a lot of, you know, momentum going. So yeah. They're going to take it way more serious. Girls love big legs now. So it's kind of shifting. Where a bikini was bigger before and... But girl, you see every freaking girl now we know, we know, every, I mean, I know what every damn mean. gym, they don't even compete. They just want to have the tree trunk legs. They I just love the look. At the end of the day, <laughs> I, I, like, I like building muscle. So, you think so for you me, think which you class I prefer is actually fitness. They're the hardest workers up yeah. there, you know? I know the number, the, the one's co- com- uh, champion right now, her name is, uh, she's from Brazil, Masia, I think, uh, what's her name? Masia Maria, Maria. Yeah, yeah. She's, a, I mean, 
She looks incredible, incredible physique. Oh, I don't insane. think, I don't think, I think Wilma the Wilma's division is going to stay real. in Brazil forever because the way these women go out to these gyms and they have this, these physiques over there, it's just like, it's hard to compete against you that. You started in Brazil, Brazilians are dominating the class. I know, but you're definitely getting a lot of Latina women doing it because naturally they are, you know, strong legged women. They, I mean, come on. You got Mexico, you got DR now. Uh, we have, you know, great girls coming out of DR. I mean, champion. I mean, it's just uh, love. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a freaking fan of all of it. I don't Definitely. care whether it's bikini, fitness, uh, physique. Uh, it's just, I love watching the show. I love watching the competition. Me too. I'm glad it's growing. I mean, Jake Wood is is really bought up the Olympia, and uh, it just give more money to it. Or athletes. always comes down to that. Oh, I mean, it always All comes right. down to that because you're getting the people buying the ticket, you're getting the people going there. So I think it should be translated. More tickets are being bought for this class. Let's give a little kickback, you know. Thank you guys. Um, <laughs> thank you for joining us this week's Generation Art Podcast. And remember, follow us, like, and comment. If you want to see any of our prior podcasts, tune in to iHeartRadio or wherever you stream your podcast. <laughs> no, stop, 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 stop. Who are you? I'm the guy that's gonna change your life. Introducing Carnivore. 100% beef protein, zero sugar, and lactose free, which means it's not gonna upset your stomach like this. You gotta try this. Best part about it is, beef builds muscle, so you're gonna grow. I'm just gonna take this away. You don't need this, man.